Well, good morning. Good to be with you again. This is on a Sunday morning. Uh, looking at Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 3 through 14. Uh, we preached some time back about the redemption that we find in Jesus Christ uh, in, verse seven, in verse 7. But I want to look at it more thoroughly this morning. Uh, this is uh, an amazing passage of Scripture that we see here. And we're going to read those verses to you this morning, beginning in the first chapter, verse 3 through 14. In the Greek Bible, this makes up the longest sentence in the Bible. In the Greek Bible, this is only one sentence. We have it uh, divided and punctuated, but it was one sentence in the Greek Bible. Paul was just so carried away with the spiritual blessings of God that he just couldn't stop. Uh, he didn't take a breath. He was just, he was just, poor. his heart was overflowing with what he realized he had in Jesus Christ. And, you know, our heart ought to be overflowing when we realize what we have in Jesus Christ. In verse 3, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given to us, uh, the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he's lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things, uh, to bring all things uh, as we look at this passage of scripture, to bring all things unto him. Uh, and I love, I love that passage, to bring all things in heaven and earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the holy, promised Holy Spirit, who is the deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to pray to the praise of his glory. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for what we do have in you. And Lord, we need to be reminded of that in our everyday life because it is so great what you've done for us. No one else could do for us. And Paul realized that and probably more than anyone because of what Paul had done. And Lord, we, we pray that uh, we'll realize that we'll be reminded of what we have in you just as Paul did. And we'll get excited and our excitement will show, our words will uh, be an excitement to other people as they listen to us talk about what you have done for us and the spiritual blessings we have because of you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, Paul just went on and on about the blessings of God. And I'm telling you, I love those songs, Count Your Many Blessings, See What God Has Done. Paul would have probably tried to do that, but he knew that it was uh, no way that he could do that. Just as we know, there's no way to do that. But he was so excited that he just kept on talking, kept on talking, and kept on talking. Uh, these blessings begin in eternity past and will, be uh, will continue into eternity future. We're looking forward to spending time, to spending heaven, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Paul uh, started off talking about how we as God's people have been adopted into the family of God. That's why I say not everyone is God's child. We hear people talk about it all, that we're all God's children. We're all God's creation, but we're not all God's children because you have to be adopted into the family of God. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, the Greek families were kind of an uh, unusual family. Of course, a lot of them were back in the day. Uh, they were considered a child into a certain age. As a matter of fact, uh, the, male, uh, the male children were taken away from their moms at seven years old and they uh, lived in a barrack till they were 30 years old. And again, they were considered uh, men then. Uh, men started the ministry. They were allowed to start a ministry at age 30. So 30 was a, was a special age, evidently. But uh, they were considered a son in the family uh, when they got, I mean, their inheritance uh, was uh, that of a son and not of uh, an outsider. But, you know, God has done the same thing to us as his people. He's adopted us, and once we accept him as Lord and Savior, we fulfill that status of being God's child. Uh, and, and I'm so thankful that we don't have to wait uh, 23 years to be considered a child of God and, and have the inheritance that we have today. It's automatically ours once we accept Christ as our personal Savior. And he says, we ought to praise the Lord because of the spiritual blessing of being adopted into the family of God. What does that actually mean? He said, well, it actually means we have the same status with Jesus, as with God, as does Jesus have. Uh, he, is a, he is a child of God. Certainly he's a son of God, but we're a child of God. The Bible also tells us that we are heirs of God, but we're joint heirs with Jesus. So what I'm telling you, being adopted into the family of God is special. God doesn't see us. Uh, he sees us in Christ. That's what he sees. And certainly, uh, I'm thankful today, he doesn't see me, but he sees Christ in me. This status is because of Christ, because of what he has done for us. Not something that we've done, but we've been adopted into the family of God because Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And we can be adopted into his family if we'll, if we'll seek forgiveness of our sins, just as Paul did. We've been adopted, and, and because of that, we're accepted into the family of God. It says we're accepted into the beloved, is what the scripture tells us. You know, people will do anything today to gain acceptance uh, from their peers. They'll dabble in drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, you know, uh, fashions, anything to be accepted. They'll do that to be accepted. You know, people do works to be accepted by God, but you know, the world and God's standards are quite different. You can't do anything uh, to be accepted by God. We're accepted by the grace of God. We, that's what he says. You know, it makes no difference to me that the world may not accept me. I'm not fashionable. I don't try to keep up with the trends. But what's most important to me that Jesus has accepted me and I am joint heirs with him and I'm so thankful that I am. Through Jesus Christ, we are acceptable to God. It would never be acceptable to him if it wasn't for what Jesus Christ did on the cross for our sins. And I'm so thankful for that. The only way we can get to God is through Jesus, is through Jesus Christ. No way else is there for us to get to God except through Jesus Christ. That's what the scripture tells us in John 14, 6. We, uh, you know, we have to go through Christ to get to God. There, there was a story some time back of a, of a Civil War soldier who was wanting to see President Lincoln. He went to uh, where the president was, and, and there was a young boy sitting by the soldier, and the, the young boy was Tad Lincoln, which was Lincoln's son, and uh, 
he asked the man what he was doing there. He said, well, I came to see President Lincoln. Uh, he said, I'll get you in. And, and the boy left. Well, he didn't know if he'd see him again or not. But the secretary came out and said, Mr. Lincoln's not seeing anyone else today. Uh, you can all go home. Everyone left except for this soldier. And the secretary asked, did, did you hear what I said? I said, the president is not accepting any more visitors today. The soldier replied, uh, Ted Lincoln said I could see his dad, and he did. You see, he got to see the president because he came through the sun. We're going to get to see God one day because we have come through Jesus Christ for what, and uh, accepted what he has done for us. You know, I want to be accepted by God, uh, but I can't get through on my own. I have to go through Jesus Christ. There Again, there's no works that you can do to be accepted, and Paul knew that, even though when he accepted Christ as his personal Savior, he was a worker and a half. I'm telling you, telling people about uh, Jesus Christ and what he had done in their life. And he did that because he had been redeemed. He knew uh, he knew that he had been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, it says uh, in verse 7 there that we have redemption. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of the sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. He knew that he had been redeemed. Uh, the word redeemed actually uh, means to be bought back. He was a sinner. Uh, he had a sin debt he could not pay. Uh, the Bible tells us we've been bought with a price, and that price was the blood of Jesus Christ. That is how we are bought today. We were once slaves to the world, but Jesus has redeemed us. He got us off the slave block, and he bought us back. You know, the reason people are not standing in line on church uh, church uh, property on Sunday morning to get in the church, uh, they don't see people excited from uh, about what Christ has done for them. Uh, you know, I like to go to Tennessee. Hopefully we're going to get to go up to Pigeon Forge in November. I don't know. But uh, I, I love to tell people about the experiences I have. I like to go to uh, the Alpha Barn. I like to go to a lot of eating places, the Old Mill. Uh, and I tell people about how I love it and how encouraged. And if you go up there, that's where you need to go. You know, I wish we'd be that uh, way about our church. Uh, I wish people would see the excitement in our life, in our voices, as we talk about our church. So many times, though, when we get out of church, uh, we run down the church. We talk about someone at church and other when we do it to people on the outside of the church, and that's not very encouraging to them. But we're supposed to be encouragers, and Paul certainly was encouraged because he uh, knew that he had been redeemed. And the only way people today will ever see God is through being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I love that song, Redeemed by the Blood of the Lamb, because that's what we are. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We've been enlightened because we have been saved. As a result of uh, the redemption that Christ has for us, we have been enlightened. enlightened. It says that in verse 8, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding, and he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. We can now understand and we can apply God's word once we have been redeemed once we are a part of the family of God. You know, I've heard some folks say, I'll never become a Christian because I can't understand the Bible. One such person said this, and he became a Christian, and this was what he said, someone must have rewrote the Bible because I can understand it now. And that's exactly the way it is. This is God's love letter to his children. Uh, and certainly, uh, you really don't have any right reading someone else's mail and this is really mail to his children. And my prayer is that we'll get excited and tell people about what Jesus Christ has really done for us. He's enlightened us 
so that we can share uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. So, and he's enlightened people uh, come to, so they can understand the gospel so that they themselves can become children of God. And then uh, Paul continues. He says, we have an inheritance. We have an inheritance. In verse, uh, verse 11 and 12, he says, In him we were also chosen, having been predestined, according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, and in order that we who were first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And then in verse 14, it says, Who is deposit? Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to praise of his glory? As a child of God, we have an inheritance. What is that inheritance? Well, he tells us in uh, 1 Peter, verse 3 and 4, Praise be to God and God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. Paul, uh, Peter talks about it here. It's an inheritance that will never perish. It'll never fade, kept in heaven for you. You know, nothing of this world uh, will affect our inheritance in heaven. It's what we do with Christ that affects our inheritance. You know, when we think about inheritances here, uh, some folks get some pretty good inheritance, but it's pale in comparison to what uh, you have in Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, it's when someone uh, passes away, uh, like when Charles passed away, he left us his house. Well, when we pass away, we'll leave someone else that same house. We don't get to keep it, but when we get to heaven, our inheritance is ours forever and forever. That's what makes it different. We've never seen our internal eternal inheritance, but one day, praise God, we will. And, and that was what Paul was excited about, what he was looking forward to. Are you looking forward to your eternal inheritance? People look forward a lot of times to their, uh, uh, the, I guess you call it physical, material inheritance here on this earth. But again, it's nothing to compare what you have in Jesus Christ. Again, Peter says it doesn't spoil, never perishes, never spoils, and never fades. It's always there, kept in heaven for you. That's what I'm looking forward to, and, and hope and pray um, that you're looking forward to it. You can be excited about it because you can rest assured it is there. And then we're, the Bible tells us that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, Verse 13, and you were included in Christ when you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. This is a specific act of the Holy Spirit, that he comes into our heart and we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. He comes in to live with us and kind of serves as a, deposit that we're going to uh, we're going to make it uh, I love the the sisters they are a southern gospel group and they sang a song I'm going to make it and from time to time when uh, I'm not feeling quite up to par something has happened in my life and uh, I love to read that uh, the verses of, of that song I'm going to make it and folks, we're going to make it. Just hold on because uh, help's on the way. We're going to make it. And what we have to look forward to is just unbelievable. But the Holy Spirit comes into our life and he seals us. And there's no way that we can uh, lose the inheritance that God has promised us. This, the Holy Spirit is kind of like a down payment uh, for things to come. You know, there's nothing today that's really secure on this earth, the jobs, marriages, uh, investments, freedoms, 
But I want you to know you can rest assured that you are secured by the sealing of the Holy Spirit. Again, I like John 10, uh, 28, 29, where he talks about no one's able to snatch uh, people out of his hands. God uh, said no one's able to snatch people out of my hand. They're safe. They're sealed. And I'm thankful for that. Then, uh, again, because of that, we're secured. Verse 14 says, Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory? The King James Version says, The earnest of our inheritance. Have you ever put up some earnest money on something, uh, on a house, an automobile, or signed a contract? Uh, Courtney just got a new vehicle, and uh, she had to put some earnest money down to hold the car because uh, the car had not come in, but it was coming in, but and she wanted it, and I mean it was a, it was a great a great deal, and so she put some earnest money down, and when it came in. Uh, they called her and told her, it's here. And she went down there and, and she purchased the vehicle. Uh, the Holy Spirit is kind of our earnest. That's what Jesus did. He made a contract with us. And that's what uh, the earnest money did, the contract when she signed the paper. I want this vehicle. Uh, he gave us his Holy Spirit, his earnest money, so to speak. And he signed it in his blood. Courtney had to sign papers, put her earnest money down and sign the paper. That's what Jesus Christ did when he gave his son to us. He gave us and we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit came into our life and it was earnest money on what was we were going to get, that inheritance that we talked about a few minutes ago. I want you to know God's not going to default on his contract either. I'm telling you, if you've been saved, you can uh, take it to the bank that one day you're going to inherit this inheritance that the Bible talks about. And I'm looking forward to it. I know you are as well if you know Christ as your personal Savior. People ask me from time to time, can you lose your salvation? Well, there'd be a lot of things you'd have to undo if you could lose your salvation. First of all, you'd have to lose... God's choosing, God's choosing, God's adoption, God's acceptance, Jesus' redemption, the blood of Jesus Christ, you'd have to, and then your inheritance, and then the Holy Spirit's sealing. You would have to break that somehow or another, and you just can't do it. You can't do it. Securing your life for eternity, that's what all of these things are. Listen. If you've truly been saved, you're always saved because you're not big enough or bad enough to undo this. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that there's nothing that I can do that can mess up God's plan. His plan's perfect. And one day we'll be perfect when we get to heaven. But right now and right here, we're just looking forward to. Uh, that's why Paul was so excited as he wrote this to the church at, at Ephesus. He was excited because he knew what was waiting him uh, despite all the things he was going through in his life. You know, our, our life is safe in God's hands. And Paul knew this, and that's why he wrote this passage. He was just bubbling over. He just couldn't hush. And, you know, when we think about it, it's kind of hard for us to hush too. When we talk about the Alpha Bar and the Old Mill or something we really enjoy, it's kind of hard for us to stop talking about it, isn't it? It was hard for Paul to just find a stopping place because when he realized what he had in Jesus Christ, he just they just couldn't uh, be shut up. But our security in Christ is something even we can't mess up. Yeah, we can mess up a lot of things down here, can't we? We have messed up a lot of things. But you can't mess that up because I'm his forever, despite my flaws, my faults, and the failures in my life. I'm in Christ. That's the place to be, folks. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ because of the cross, because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. Are you in Christ? You know, as Christians, we ought to be as excited as Paul was. 
as he wrote this long sentence, when we realize what Christ has done for us as well. And if you're lost today, uh, would you love to have what Paul talked about? You can. It's available to you. You can if you'll accept what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you, dying for your sin debt that you could never pay. What about it? Christian, you're excited. are you excited about the gospel? Do people see the excitement in your voice, in your actions about what Christ has done for you? Lost person, I hope and pray that you see that in the life of a, of a Christian. And because of that, you want to know what this excitement's all about. And you're ready to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And one day, uh, you'll have a place waiting on you just as every believer does. We believe that. Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a mansion for you. And if I go away, I'm coming back again. Receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. Listen, I'm excited about that, aren't you? We ought to let the world know where they can find some real excitement, real security, especially in times we're facing today with this virus and everything else uh, that entails in uh, our everyday life. So my prayer is, Christian, that you'll be happy, you'll be excited about what God has done for you when you really sit down and think about it. And your excitement will will spill over to someone else that's looking for some real excitement in their life and change their life forever. And my prayer is that you will do that. You'll be the Christian. You'll be the spokesman. You'll be the example that God wants you to be in your everyday life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity of just being able to to talk about what you have done for us. According to the scriptures, we know that uh, there's a better place than that than we have here, Father. We're just looking forward to that time. We're thankful for the excitement that we have here, but it's going to be pale in comparison to the excitement when we see our mansion that you've prepared for us, for the streets of gold, Lord, for the gates of pearl. Lord, it's just hard for us to sometimes to contain our excitement when we think about that compared to what we're living in today. Lord, you've blessed us here. Uh, we have things, everything we need, but when we get to heaven, it's, it's just going to be amazing. And I pray people will get excited about that enough that it will uh, spill over and get some uh, person that's lost, excited, wanting to know what we're excited about, and then They'll have an opportunity to be excited as well because they've accepted what you did for them on the cross. And that's you gave your life, you shed your blood so they could have this inheritance that Paul talks about. Lord, we just uh, ask you to, to use this message to touch hearts and change lives. Give Christians excitement. Lord, convict those that are lost and help them to realize that a relationship with you is what they've been looking for all their life and how easy it is to have that relationship by just saying, yes, Lord, I accept you into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sins so I can become a child of the King. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, it's always good to be with you. Uh, I had eye surgery, so I can see very well. Uh, of course, I uh, cannot see very close. Uh, no, I don't see well close, but at distance, is, it's just amazing. The colors are so brilliant, and, uh, but I just thank God for that. That's a miracle in my life. I never, I've been wearing 65. I've been wearing them for 61 years. Uh, but God is still in the miracle business, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, you continue to remember uh, Danny Jones as he recovers from the uh, bypass that he had. Uh, continue to remember uh, Judy Robertson's uh, sister, uh, Angela Tenale. Uh She was taken to hospice. You pray for that family. 
and uh, just looking forward to seeing you again. If you're not able to make it, don't feel comfortable in coming. Uh, I'm glad that I can come to you through uh, the phone or the YouTube, whatever you watch me on. But uh, this is just a, a blessing from God that we're still able to share the message of Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray that it was a blessing to you today. Thank you, and always remember, we love you.